Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. You guys know that I'm a huge hockey fan, and my two favorite teams are the Minnesota Wild and the Detroit Red Wings. Well, the Chicago Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup this year, and I give them huge props for that. I made a bet with a couple of my Chicago friends that the Hawks wouldn't win, and I lost. That's why I'll be wearing this Chicago Blackhawks jersey the entire show and making matters even worse, ex-Red Wing Marion Hosa's on my back. Oh, and by the way, we're going to do some identifying of some cool morphs for you guys. You're watching Snake Bite. It's obviously really important to be able to identify morphs when you're breeding animals, whether you're doing it for a hobby or as a business. When you're selling an animal, you gotta know what you're selling. And of course, when you're bringing an animal in for the very first time, you gotta know what you're looking for so that you hopefully are identifying an actual new morph that's gonna prove out genetic. Take, for instance, this ball python. This is a normal ball python, and even normal ball pythons are very polymorphic, but when identifying a mutation, it's always about color and pattern. And even a normal ball python will have some polymorphism in that way but when you bring in something like a spider ball python it's obviously very different you can see with this animal the color and the pattern is very different not all mutations have both color and pattern mutations but in this case it does you can see all the white in the side and of course the really reduced spider web pattern down its back this is a good indication that this animal is probably genetic and well worth the investment in time and money this pinstripe ball python is a perfect example of a pattern mutation, but not a color mutation. If you actually match up the colors to a normal ball python, they're really the exact same color, even though the reduction of pattern actually makes it look like it's a lighter animal. The truth is, this is just a pattern mutation, and we brought in the very first one back in the late 90s. It was really exciting to us, and we knew we might have a winner, and we were really fortunate that it proved out genetic. Now this is a nasanthic ball python and it has a normal pattern but it's actually lacking a pigment or a color. In this case it's lacking xanthophore which is a yellow pigment. There's a few other mutations that are similar to this in the fact that they look completely different but have the completely normal pattern. Caramel albino, albino and ghost are a couple just to name a few. This is where it gets a little more difficult when you get into three bang animals or higher than that. This animal actually has three genes in it. It has Woma, it has Lesser, and it has Pinstripe. Now the Pinstripe pattern is very obvious. We know it's a Pinstripe, but the color is a little bit off, and that makes me believe there's no doubt that there is a Lesser in this because it wouldn't be so light and coppery unless there was a Lesser in it. But if it was just a Lesser in a Pinstripe, it would be what they call a Kingpin, and it looks nothing like a Kingpin. That tells me that the patterning influence has to have Woma python in it. When dealing with different species of animals outside of ball pythons, there's a whole new set of circumstances that you have to look at. For instance, these anaconda hogs, the very first one that Brent Baumgartner had, he wasn't even sure it was genetic. When he bred it out and noticed that some of the babies actually looked different, about half of them, he thought that they might be codominant. And the more he worked with them, the more interesting they became, just like this little guy that is no doubt not a normal hog nose. Sticking with hog nose, these caramel albinos were actually a pretty interesting one because when we first got them, we weren't sure if they were a form of hypomelanistic, and there's actually another phase that's actually called toffee belly. And although these guys all have really similar things, this particular animal we knew wasn't a hypo because it had red pupils, and we were pretty certain that it wasn't a toffee belly because the belly pattern's just completely different and really faded out. And as we've been working with it, we've proved that it's not a hypo, and we're pretty certain that the toffee belly are something completely different. On to scaleless corn snakes. Well, it doesn't have scales. This is when it's really important to know what you're looking at when you're talking about genetics. These are babies that just hatched out that are going to go into cages and they need to be marked properly. Now, I know the parents of these guys on each of the boxes, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know and walk through each of them and tell you what I'm seeing. The first box, obviously, this one looks pretty easy to me, to be honest with you. This is obviously ivory ball pythons. Again, the way I can tell is they're just white snakes. They have dark heads, a little bit of a yellow stripe down their back, pretty easy. There's actually one normal albino right here and the other ones obviously have spider pattern on it so i know these guys are albino spiders it's pretty easy to figure this one out this is pretty interesting because again this is where it's so important to know what bred what these guys are obviously all just a bunch of hypo or ghost ball pythons but i happen to know is the father was a ghost pied so these guys are all ghost ball pythons that are het for piebald 
Okay, this box is pretty obvious too, but I always love opening up a box that have these animals in them. These are actually piebald ball pythons and het piebald ball pythons. So again, not a real hidden gem in here, but I tell you what, it never gets old producing piebalds. Okay guys, this is one that I really need to know what's in because I'm not even sure what it is. This is actually a pewter female bred to a Woma pin lesser. There's no doubt that there's Woma in there, there's pinstripe in there, there's pastel in there, and there's cinnamon in there, and I'm pretty sure there's a chance there could be lesser in there. The problem is when you look at an animal like this, you almost have to breed it out to make 100% sure. So it's probably gonna be a couple years before I really know what morphs are in this guy. All right guys, it's Cow's Question Week. Now, if you guys noticed, Brian was wearing that Blackhawks jersey around because he lost a bet. You know, I'm kind of a betting man myself, but I usually win. Um, one interesting bet I had though was uh, with my girlfriend. She bet that I couldn't bench press her 30 times, and uh, and I did. And she had, well, let's just say that that it was, the outcome was good for me. I want to know from you guys, what's the most interesting, crazy bet you've ever won or lost? Let me know. Text or video, comment below. We're gonna have a battle of the sexes today. George against Chewy. I have four snakes in which I'm gonna show them. They haven't seen these snakes before. They're going to have to tell me the names of the snakes. Whoever gets the most correct wins, and the loser has to face the consequences. All right, contestants, snake number one. Now, Chewy, since you have seniority, you get to choose whether to go first or pass to George. Um, I'll go first. Okay. Here is the first specimen. Penstripe Lesser. I'm going to go Lemon Blast Yellow Belly. This snake is a Woma Lesser pin. Chewy, you got that one correct. Well, as a almost correct. I said best. Snake number two. Lavender corn snake. I would say this is an anatheristic lavender, Cal. The correct answer is lavender blood red. And both of you guys suck equally. So, you both get a point. Chewie, are you ready for snake number three? Yes, sir. A lesser lemon ghost, Cal. I got his one. Humblebee, something like a bee in it somewhere. All right, guys. Even though you completely butchered the snake, since this is a super pastel butter edgy spider, George, you were a little bit closer. So the point goes to you, two two. All right, guys. The final round. Consider this overtime. Sudden death. Last snake. This is a hypo white-sided Brooks. This is ghost head white side. All right, guys, this is a ghost, white side of Brooks. Again, you both suck equally, so I'm going to have to go to the tiebreaker snake. I hope you know how much is riding on this, because the loser has to handle an unknown snake blindfolded. This is going to be a devastating loss. We had a coin flip, and Chewy won, so he's going to go first. It's another morph. It has three genes in it, okay? okay. The first person to get the complete name with all three genes wins. Are you ready? Bumblebee, Pinstripe, Lemon Blast. Ghost, Spider, Mojave. Ding, ding, ding. George gets it. Oh. Ghost, Spider, Mojave. Oh, God. Don't do that. Oh, you Where's the spell? Ah, oh. For this week's Common of the Week on the Five Ways to Get Snakes episode, the question was, what have you done to convince someone to get something? And Logical Insanity said, I have persuaded people to do everything. I have made people think they didn't do something or say something when they actually did. It's pretty fun. I've also convinced someone that my cat is psychic. It was pretty funny. I'm a compulsive liar. Well, I tell you what, at least you admit that you're a pathological liar. There's nothing wrong with that. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. 
So there it is. I made it through the whole show wearing this jersey. I tell you what, I feel dirty and I need to go home and take a shower, but I paid my debt for that nasty bet that I made. I hope you guys also learned something about identifying morphs. And I want to give a huge shout out to my friends over at MonsterSnakesForums.com. There's going to be a really cool contest called the Summer Slam. They're going to be giving away all kinds of sweet prizes. It goes on for the next couple months. Right. Listen, dude. Burn took a huge to wear, dude. They're out of paper towel. Got nothing to clean it up with. Use this. You've been watching Snake Bites.